What we're going to be going over here is an overview of our cost accounting system, but we're going to be just specifically looking at our inputs and our inventory valuations here. So when we're talking about a cost accounting system, really we have five different parts here. We have the input measurement basis, we have the inventory valuation method, cost accumulation methods, cost flow assumptions, and recording our inventory interval here. But what we're going to be looking at is our input measurement basis here, and we're going to tie that into our inventory valuation methods. And just go a uh, basic overview of what these would be here. So for our input measurement basis, that we would have either actual historical costing, normal historical costing, or standard costing. And then for our inventory valuation methods, we're going to either have the throughput basis here, the direct, variable, direct or variable method, and then a full absorption or activity based here. Okay, so let's start with our input measurements here, and we'll go through each of those three here. All right. Okay, so first for our actual historical costing, this is where our direct materials, our direct labor, and our factory overhead are going to go in at their actual cost here. And they refer to that as the historical cost, but the actual cost that you occurred here for the period, and they're going to flow into the inventory account here, all at their actual costs. So actual historical cost system, only the historical costs or those actual costs flow through the inventory accounts. Historical costs refer to the costs that have been recorded. The actual costs that you experience for the period here or for the product that's flowing through at the time. Okay, now for our normal historical costing. This is where our direct materials and our direct labor here, they're going to go in at their actual cost here into the inventory account. But the difference is our factory overhead. This is going to go in at some applied cost or some standard cost. It's going to flow into the factory overhead. And any difference between the standard that we established and any actual costs here for the period for factory overhead are going to go into an overhead variance account. And these overhead variances, they would be like close to some cost of goods sold or some expense account at the end of the period here. But they, any difference between under or over applied uh, factory overhead here based on those variances is not going into the inventory account. Again, normal historical costing uses the historical cost for the direct materials and direct labor. But the overhead is charged or applied to the inventory using a predetermined overhead rate per any activity measure that you'd have. And then our last uh, input measurement would be standard costing here. Now this is the case where your direct material, your direct labor, and all your factory overhead, they go in at an applied cost or a predetermined cost. They're going to go into the inventory account. And any variances between your actual cost here and the applied cost for direct material, direct labor, and factory overhead are going to go into different variance accounts here. The direct materials variances, direct labor variances, and overhead variances. And then any under or over applied uh, overhead or variance here or overhead, excuse me, materials, labor, and overhead here would be those any under applied amounts would be close to some expense account at the end of the period like cost of goods sold or something. But the difference between the applied cost, that is the standard cost that you're established, and the actual cost that you experience here for your materials, your direct labor or direct material here, direct labor in factory overhead, they only go in the only the applied standard goes into our inventory account. Okay, so for standard, the standard cost system, all manufacturing costs are applied or charged to inventory using a standard or predetermined price for prices and the quantities, we should say here. So the difference between the applied cost and the actual cost are charged to variance accounts, and the variances provide the basis for the concept of accounting control. Okay, so next let's move into our inventory valuation methods. Now for our inventory valuation methods, starting with our throughput or what they would call just-in-time costing here. This is the case where our inventory, only the direct material here is going to be charged to the inventory or capitalized in our inventory. The direct labor, the factory overhead, both variable and fixed factory overhead, go to the expense. They're expensed when they're incurred. 
and then our selling and administrative and our both the variable and the fixed portion go to the expense. They're expensed when they're incurred. So with the throughput or the just-in-time costing, only the direct material goes and is recorded here in your inventory. So that's the only amount that's being capitalized. Okay, so with the throughput method, it was developed to complement the concept referred to as the theory of constraints. In this method, only direct material costs are charged to inventory. All other costs are expensed during the period. Okay, next for the direct or variable costing. This is the case where the direct materials, your direct labor, and your factory overhead, the variable portion of your factory overhead, gets charged or recorded in inventory, and those are the amounts that would be capitalized here. Now, your factory overhead, the fixed portion, in any selling and administrative expenses, both the variable and the fixed portion get charged to expense. Or they're expensed when they're incurred. So with direct or variable method here, only the variable manufacturing costs are capitalized or charged to the inventory. The fixed manufacturing costs flow into the expense in the period that they're incurred. Now for inventory evaluation using the full absorption costing method. This is where your direct materials, your direct labor, your factory overhead, both the variable and your fixed portion here, your factory overhead, go and are recorded in the inventory or they're capitalized in the inventory. Now, the selling and administration and both variable and fixed portion of your selling and administration, they go and they're recorded as expense here and they're expensed when they're incurred. Okay, so for the full absorption method here, all manufacturing costs are capitalized in the inventory and charged to the inventory and become assets. This means that these costs do not become expenses until the inventory is sold. Okay, and then finally looking at our activity-based costing method here. This is the case here where your direct materials, your direct labor, your factory overhead, variable and fixed factory overhead, and your selling and administration, both your variable and fixed portion here, go and they're recorded in an activity cost pool here. So everything here uh, gets recorded in your activity cost pool. And then what it would come out of the activity cost pool and would go into inventory, it would be capitalized in the inventory account. So the point is here, with activity-based costing, nothing is expensed, nothing. Everything goes into these activity cost pools and then they get pulled out of these activity cost pools and they go into the inventory and then capitalize there. Okay, so with activity-based costing, that's, this can be used as an inventory evaluation method and it has improved accuracy as accomplished by tracing the cost to the products through the activities. In other words, the costs are traced to the activity through activity costing and then these costs are traced into a second stage to the products that really use these activities. Okay, so this is just an overview here of looking at our different inventory evaluation methods and how, our input, how we determine our different input costing methods.